Ladies and gentlemen, before we start this episode of the Wadcast Podcast, I have a few things to talk to you about. Uh, we have an amazing episode. I say that every week. This week was one of the more fun episodes to do. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, I was down in San Diego. I had a whole bunch of interviews lined up and uh, ended up getting a chance to meet the guys from Move You. Uh, those guys are Dr. Mike Wasilisson and Andrew Dettelbach. Both of them, uh, very difficult names, but uh, two of the most awesome guys ever. Uh, I hung out with Mike all week. He came to a couple of my shows, went to dinner. Their, um, their site and what they're doing is absolutely phenomenal. If you are doing CrossFit or any kind of any kind of exercising and or have look everyone you know has back problems knee problems whatever especially as you get older younger you get hurt older just injuries just add up because you're old and um you need to fix it and as these guys call it fix show shit go to move you check out what these guys are doing move you i feel like i'm doing a commercial but i'm not i'm just i really believe in what these guys are doing it's incredible they've created a community kind of like crossfit has and uh, they're, they're go see their stuff. I don't want to ruin anything. We talk about it in the show, but I just want you to know they are awesome, awesome, awesome people. I had so much fun with them, and uh, found out after the episode that Mike's from Pittsburgh. We didn't find out till much later. I wish we knew. Um, but uh, other things that are going on Patreon. If you want to support the show, best thing to do is just give us some money. That's it. Go to Patreon, donate. Uh, if you donate at least five dollars a month, you know you uh, you know put in a five dollar a month donation, you can be in the drawing for a myopux and a leopard claw. What's a myopux? It's a electronic muscle stimulator that these guys at Move You would tell you you absolutely should have. Everyone should have one of those. Everyone should have some kind of Theragun or uh, competitor to Theragun. Yeah, uh, you need those things. You need these tools in your life to keep you from going to the doctors. You work on yourself. You do all the right rehab. You get some bands, some, some, uh, you know, trigger point therapy, some, and something like a myopux to flush out your waste and you're good to go. You save yourself tons of money in physical therapy, tons of money with chiropractors. You'll save yourself money from going to doctors. So if you give five bucks a month, guess what? That's five bucks a month. That's like a dollar an episode. And you could end up with the Myopox, which is an electronic muscle stimulator. It's like a stim machine, but it also can flush all that toxic stuff out of your injuries and, and stop the congestion and bring in uh, new blood. And it's great. It's great. Sends it all out to your lymphatic system. And uh, the winner this week is Kenneth Bauer. Congratulations, Kenneth. Send us a message at wadcastpodcast at yahoo.com. We'll set you up with that. And you're going to get yourself a leopard claw also. How cool is that? You get a leopard claw and you get a myopox. Uh, other things going on. If you guys want to help the show and you don't want to donate any money, just go to iTunes. Rate, review, and comment. Rate, review, comment, subscribe. Rate, review, comment, subscribe. Rate, review, comment, subscribe. Um, I haven't read any reviews in a while. Let's see if I get it. It got a nice one. Um, we, we got one the other day that was just evil. Somebody was really angry at me. Um, after this episode, we're probably going to have some evil ones too. Um, but I don't give a shit. I think they're kind of funny. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Here. New listener. Great show. Well, thank you. Shawl05. Love this podcast. Great podcast. Very interesting and funny. Great for long car rides. Hayes 1982 GA. Thank you for that. Uh, here's someone that did not like this episode with Hunter. Jill 1976 said, I wanted this episode to be so good, but the audio at the beginning and the kids screaming, ugh. Well, thanks for coming on and... You obviously listened to all the episodes and you decided to review one episode and trash the whole show. Um, that hurts because we just got two stars from you because I do the audio myself. I travel all over the world. It's pretty hard. And yes, my daughter was there trying to trash the show. Uh, so, all right, I'll take your two stars. Um, here's one. 
Kim KR13 said, Eddie, I've been listening to the podcast since the beginning. I love the dynamic among you, Armin and Scott, but on your own, you're doing an amazing job of getting diverse guests, having engageful, engaging, thoughtful conversations. You somehow managed to channel the best of all three of you into the newest version of the show while making it your own unique show at the same time. Love it. Um, a couple of people have asked about getting the guys back together for a reunion show. And I would like to do that. Um, it's pretty hard with my schedule, but I think we can make it happen. You know, Armin would have to be in town. Um, but it would be fun to do. Um, this one's funny. I really want to leave a crappy review for Eddie to destroy as that is very entertaining, but it would be all lies. I love stand-up comedy, CrossFit, OCR, and general fitness, and this podcast touches on all of those things at various points. I laugh and learn. Keep it up. Thank you guys all for your reviews uh, and ratings. Um, I, I do appreciate it. That, by the way, that was Mum Malone, 1865. Mum Malone. Thank you guys, and thank you guys that have been coming out to my shows. I guess I'm getting the party CrossFitters that are actually showing up. Uh, I was in San Diego this weekend. They showed up. They were there. CrossFitters were there. And that's great. I love that. I love to meet you after the show. I love to talk to you. Uh, if I'm going to talk to somebody, I would like to talk to, to people that listen to the show the most because you already understand everything that I know and you, um, you, uh, you know where all the good places to eat, the good places to work out. So it's kind of cool to hang out with you guys. So thanks for coming out. I got some dates coming up. I'm going to be in Seattle, September 19th to 22nd, September 19th to 22nd at the Underground. It's one of my favorite places to perform. I love basements. Basements are the best place for comedy because it's almost like you're doing something illegal. This place is a basement. It's so much fun. It's right in downtown Seattle. I don't know where downtown is, but it's somewhere downtown. Uh, come check out the shows. 19, 20, 21, 22. The Underground in Seattle. Then I'll be in October. I'm coming up to Reno, Nevada. I'll be at the Laugh Factory at the Silver Legacy Casino. That's uh, Reno, Nevada. And then uh, I have a big show November, not November 3rd. What? November 2nd, I believe. November 2nd. Big, 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 big show. I canceled September 4th. 21st uh at the ice house because i have to go away uh to seattle november 2nd though i'm going to be doing a one hour taping a one hour taping so i need the best audience if you live in la and you want to come to the show message me at wadcast podcast at yahoo.com i'll try to hook you up with tickets free tickets to that show because i would like to have fans there for november 2nd like really really it's really important that i f tape a good one hour set, uh, for something special. And so the more fans I have in the show, people who laugh at me, like me, enjoy me, the better. So they will be selling tickets for probably $25, but I want my fans there. So if you listen to the show, you really enjoy what I do, please message me and I will put you on my VIP list. That's November 2nd at the Ice House in Pasadena. November 8th and 9th, I'm in Calgary, Canada. November uh, 28th to December 1st, I'm in Naples, Florida. Uh, December 5th through 8th, I'm in uh, uh, Harvey's in Portland, Oregon. And then I'm coming up uh, December 12th to 15th, I'll be in Anchorage, Alaska. So check out all those dates. And then the new year, I've got a whole bunch of dates. I'm going to start going back out on tour every week. So I'm taking some time off kind of now to, to spend time with the family, raise my kids and um, work on the show. So big things are going to be happening. Hats are being made right now. Wadcast podcast hats are going to be made. They will be available at findsoutherngentleman.com. I will post the links and everything as soon as they're ready and they'll be on, um, uh, you'll see them on our Instagram page. Please add us on our Instagram page or our Facebook page. You can find us there. Uh, it's at Wadcast Podcast or Wadcast Podcast on Facebook, and the hats will be available there. Thanks for listening. Oh, you want to get involved in the 68 mile run? We are running November 22nd. So far, I think I have Tommy Hackenbrook, Dustin Fierro. Dustin is a good friend, San Diego lifeguard, ultra marathoner who, uh, has been on the show because he, 
finishes second every time on the paddle from San Pedro to Catalina. It's like a 32 mile paddleboard across. I mean, he's a monster. So everybody going on this is a monster except for me. And I'm going to need those monsters to carry me. So we're doing 68 miles to raise money for the, um, the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. And, uh, that supports the families of the firefighters who, uh, you know, leave us. And, uh, these guys do a service to us and, uh, they don't, they don't get paid as well as they should. They don't, their families aren't taken care of like they should. And, uh, we have to do more for them. Yeah, I watched them fight the fires in my neighborhood and I thought this is the least I can do. I'm going across the mountain range that they fought the fires on and I'm going to go the whole way, 68 miles. The goal is to break 24 hours. We need people. We need people to help out. We're going to have four aid stations every 17 miles. We're going to stop to refuel, get some more water, change socks, and keep moving to do this in 24 hours. So if you want to get involved, again, send a message to wadcastpodcast at yahoo.com. Get involved with us. Or you can just donate. We're going to have a link posted, and you can donate to the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation because I just want to raise awareness and some um, some finances funding for them. Um, let's, uh, should we get this, uh, episode started? I would really like to, cause it was really fun and these guys are really funny and really helpful. They do a really cool thing. So check it out, uh, and enjoy, uh, Mike and Andrew from, uh, move you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ift, and I'm here with uh, Mike Wasselison. You nailed it. Nice. I nailed it. Mike Wasselison and Andrew yeah. Birkenstock. Perfect. <laughs> better, 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 better back. Better dark, back. Better, back. better, better dark. Andrew, better back. Better Andrew, back. Da- Andrew, dark Devil chocolate. Cock, little cock. Oh, little yeah, cock. Yeah, yeah. And all names I got. Is that you got that one? Oh, yeah. That's a horrible thing to be called as a child. I wasn't it was listening. True. Wasn't listening. Is what That's I a got. good one. I got Eddie. If I was only Eddie. If I had a brain, Eddie. Uh, it's too long. They, they weren't just, good. They're not good marketers. No, too uh, long. Too many syllables. They say if you give a kid a fucked up name, it gives them uh, better self esteem. I guess it depends what the name is. Because they uh, they have cock. they have to deal with shit. So uh, you know they, it makes them stronger. Okay. There's a like, family I knew that was, uh, their last name was Woodman, and it was Branch, Twig, and Leaf were the kids' names. No. Yeah. yeah Woodman. What were the beatings those kids got? Oh, man. <laughs> Joe Wipers. <laughs> Always my dad used. It's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> um, yeah, we had, a, we had in my high school a uh, Mike Hunt. Yeah. Really had one. That's beautiful. Yeah. What's this? Mike, Mike Hunt. Hunt. Oh, Mike. You had a Mike Hunt? We had one in my high school. Wow. Yeah. It was unbelievable. A guy, he's like, no, no, it's not Mike. Mike Space Hunt. <laughs> when we did my old podcast, which was called Talking Shit, they wouldn't let us do Talking Shit on iTunes. So I tried to do Talking S asterisk asterisk yeah, yeah. T. Yeah, we, wouldn't let that. Yeah. We had to do Talkins Hit. I just moved the space. Oh, like there this. You go. Fix your shit. His shirt, Andrew's shirt, on three fix lines. Yoss fix Yoss Hit. Oh yeah, same thing. Wow, we, we can relate. Oh my God, Eddie. we're bonding, and that's uh, <laughs> if, if you know what I'm talking to or who I'm We've talking to there. right now, you know with the fix yo shit. Um, if you follow them on Instagram, it's Move You. I'm here with the guys from Move You, who um, it's a letter U by the way in there. Yeah, I found you guys just on Instagram. When I, that's what I, I probably I start I don't know maybe a year ago or something. I started watching oh. your page. Cool, and I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but I was like, wow, these guys know their shit. Oh. And uh, I'm a big fan of some guys like Kelly Sturette and yeah. um, I had Dr. Wes Hendrickson. Do you know uh, no. Dr. Wes? He's really I good. Know that one. Had him on the show a few weeks ago in North Carolina. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm lucky enough that when I travel, I get to go to these places all the time and I just find oh, yeah, someone. So I'm in San Diego right. this week and uh, I couldn't get anyone else. <laughs> So we were last in the <laughs> no, I, I, I wanted to come shoot guns. These guys let me shoot guns in the backyard. They got a pull. I don't know what goes on. I, I, 
I got to tell you guys. Well, it's only daylight right now. Let's <laughs> let's try to let's try to break this down. I watch your videos. You seem to know everything. You're you're a doctor. You say. Um, I don't really say I'm a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if you weren't at all? You're like one of those fake guys. Yeah, I really don't ever say I'm a doctor on social media. <laughs> That's true. I don't. That, oh, that is true. You yeah. do not. Uh-uh. Not at all. You just look like two guys kind of fucking around. There you go. That We've achieved <laughs> we one of our goals. We truly feel that way. But it's great. It's so entertaining. I'm not lying to you. I'm a comedian. I find it really funny. And also, like... We live in this society now where everything has to be entertaining. When we go to the gas station, there has to be a screen in front of us. Oh, right, right. Our president has to be f- entertaining. He's, he's entertaining. He's so is. entertaining. <laughs> the, mo- the most entertaining that's fucker why that's I'm, ever well, That's why I'm like, what is going on today? The president yeah. is entertaining. Yeah, I go, even if you hate him, you wake up every day going, hope he says some dumb shit dumb today. Shit today. <laughs> if he doesn't, I'm upset. <laughs> like when he does... When they're like, well, the president was very presidential this week, and he oh. went to the G7, and I'm like, you mean, that. you mean nothing? We're not getting anything. Did he, he walk to the plane in his underwear? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> like, if Kim Jong-un came to America and ran against him, I would vote for Kim Jong-un because I think he could be more entertaining. Oh, well, it's just from an enter... I mean, I love comedy, and I've yeah. secretly thought of myself as a comedian, yeah. and I absolutely love enter- anything comedy-based... It just grabs my attention and holds it. So yeah. Kim Jong Un, hilarious, and, and yeah, dude, he's hilarious. I mean, him and Trump together, you can't pay for that. He like he acts, write that script. He the Kim Jong Un is like his acts are like these terror acts, but he looks like a big child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dave Dave Attell, really funny comedian. Dave Attell goes, you know, he goes, uh, uh, strange guy, but he looks really ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> he does look ticklish. That is well said. Every time I go to New York City Comedy Cellar, he's always down there. Oh, Atel? Dave is. Yeah. yeah, I used to. I, that's the club that I came up in. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's spe- my favorite stand I, I spent stand-up. Ten, 10 years at that club. What's it like performing there? Uh, well, when I started, they used to do one show a night. And it would start at 8 o'clock and end at 2 in the morning. And all the comics would do like 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. And depending on where you were kind of ranked, you would go on. Or if you were dirty or like I was a dirtier comic, so I'd end. go on late. Yeah. Like one forty five yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And I would always follow Attell. Uh, so he's the best living comedian ever. Attell. The he's best. your favorite comedian. Best if you okay. if you polled Not mine, but I like I if do, you polled a hundred comedians right now, okay. hundred stand up comedians, I think you'd get about of who their favorite comic of all time. I think about seventy five percent of them would say Dave Attell. No. Oh. That number's high. Because a lot of people go back to uh, um, Bill Hicks, Ed, or, yeah, Bill Hicks, or or Eddie Murphy. I'm telling you, the Living Comics would say, or or Steve Martin. I'm telling you, the Living Comics. I was just there uh, like a couple weeks ago well, doing Dave shows. Without anything new, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He he performs. He's on bumping mics now. But, bumping uh, mics. But uh, <laughs> he and he and Jeff I Ross do a tour together where they just roast people in the audience. They That's bring clever. people up and make fun of them. Anyway, I was there one night. And we were talking about it, and uh, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Dave Chappelle, Amy Schumer, and someone else were there at the cellar that night, and none of them wanted to go on after Dave. Uh, and they they were all like, as soon as Dave went on, they all went down to watch him. When he goes on, we we don't go to watch anyone. Like I'll, We sit upstairs and shoot the shit with each other. There's a table upstairs for the comedians only, and we all sit and shoot the shit. When Dave goes on, everybody slinks downstairs. No going shit. The, yeah, it's, I can't say I've had not the best impression of Dave the last three times I was a comedy seller because he got up there and he it was almost oh. like he had, it was almost like he had nothing on his mind. Like he's just like ah, uh, so uh, yeah, he does. Well, that. How's the love life going over there? And like it was just like it was. He, like, does, he does that, but he's written every night. The guy writes like ten new minutes of material. Oh no shit! And he shows up with just like. He'll call me sometimes at like three in the morning. He'll be like, "Hey, do you have a joke about fire hydrants and prostitutes and how they look like you could have sex with them, but it you know it, it has to be in a Ferris wheel?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> no one has that joke, Dave. No one thinks I'm like stuck. You. I'm almost there. Yeah, he, you know, it's we know I'm proud of our comedians that follow that that, that follow our oh, fans yeah. and move you. So we have um, and Trevor Noah. He's okay. a fan of movie. Now I'm I'm a big fan of Trevor. I think he's like very. He's a uh, universally liked comedian. Yeah, yeah. He can generate a large audience. Um, I got a comment 
compliment from Jerry Seinfeld. Shut the fuck. He said, that guy, he said, quote, that guy is funny and clever. I framed in there. <laughs> How did you get that? His wife was a fan of ours, and I asked her, I'm like, is Jerry follow move you? And then she started showing him some of her videos. So I got a, he's funny and clever from Jerry. This wow. One, seriously, is one of the best comments I've ever seen in my he life. He gives me nothing. I've worked with him a bunch, and he gives me, like, just full attitude every time. Oh, so flat. Every wow. single time I see him, and I try to talk to him, I'm like, why do I even try? <laughs> as soon as I walk away, I'm like, why did I just do that to myself? <laughs> One night, uh, he came into the club and I was hosting. And I go, Jerry, where at? Uh, stand up New York in New yeah. York City. I go, what? Do you want to go on? And he goes, why else would I be here? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then aggressive. another another time I said to him. He, Something you would say, Andrew. Yeah. So another time, you, it, it's polite to ask the comedian, what do you want me to say about you? Because uh, you do an introduction for him. You might have seen this guy on this. You know who he is or you know this. Uh, or, you know, sometimes they have a special. His special's coming out this week. Right. Or check out his new movie. Or, right. Is there some way, Jerry, you want me to introduce you? What so, does he say? So I said, Jerry, uh, <laughs> what would you like me to say about you? And he looks me right in the face and goes, like it matters. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, dick. You know, like, you, you're oh, just going to keep being a dick? Like- like yeah. it matters. One night I see him outside the. That's cl- I see. I see him outside the comedy cellar, and he's got. He's you know he's got like 150 or 300 Porsches, and uh, I see a Porsche parked outside, and it's it's illegal to park right outside there, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, it's a pretty nice Porsche, and uh, I look at the the license plate, and it says something like a number like nine nine eight six one st, and I'm like, huh, and then all of a sudden Jerry gets out. And I go, ah, that's what I thought. And uh, I just go, hey, Jerry. <laughs> and I go, what's, what's the license plate? And he goes, oh, this is the first one Porsche made, and they gave it to me. And then he just walked <laughs> <laughs> You're like, damn, I'm trying like, my best. I know. I was like, I cannot win this guy over. He is such a. Andrew, you have anything to say about your RAV4? <laughs> Dude, that shit is fast. Wait, I, 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 I didn't get you on the mic there. Where are you? Oh. Go, 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 go. The Rav Four, yeah, oh, Andrew, beastly. It's beastly. Yeah, is that what you're driving? Uh-huh. He doesn't have much to compare it to. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't ask you about it if I saw it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, car. Uh, He's you, proud to keep go. that damn thing. Like, for some you, reason. I run that you, thing down. Do you yeah. do you drive Uber? Uh, that's what I'd probably ask you. Oh yeah, it'd be a decent Uber that, car. I'd be happy if yeah. you came and got me Rav Four is an Uber. Um, I yeah. wish. I mean, dream Uber so, pickup. So as as uh, Andrew Uber X, Andrew who's talking is the one who never talks in the videos. In the videos, is he allowed is on he, Instagram? It's interesting. Is he's the founder? He's the creator of the movie, the actual program, the method. He talks nonstop in there. So people, he, nonstop. It's a, it's a complete one eighty. You guys are like Penn and Teller. I don't know yeah. that. Yeah, Penn and Teller are, uh, you know, they're the the magicians. Oh yeah, I've heard that before. Comparison. And, and the one guy talks, and the one guy never ever talks. Is that is that your thing? Jay like, and Silent Bob kind of thing. Do you guys have you decided that? Well, that I mean, he, kind of he's just he's so charismatic and just explosive and i just have goofy body movements and that's just how it kind of evolved yeah you're ripped to shreds though too you're like hey everybody look at me hey, that's... I've, I've been working on this my whole life and i am perfect i don't need to speak you look at you you look I, like i'm trying guy. to i'm trying to like compensate with my words I'm like, no no no, no. Uh, look, you got to do this because I, one day i was i was like that point i'm like trying with my words all i have <laughs> yeah that, that's why guys like you and i we go to bars that, where you can talk. I got yeah, have to talk. Yeah, have to talk. He goes to nightclubs where you just look across the room and you're like, "Look at me, I'm beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. Let's go not talk to each the other." The best picture ever of Andrew. It was he was at this country. He was at this country. It was like a country bar or something. They called him up on stage. There was like him and five guys on stage. And then the, 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 all the lights are on. For some reason, Andrew took his shirt off. Of course he did. He took it off. They had to do whatever I did. <laughs> and so whenever they took it off, someone captured a picture of the look on all of their faces when they saw him take a shirt off. And they were just like, it was just melting souls. It was just impending doom. Some big dudes were taking their shirts off. They dude. did it. And I was doing all these dances and were shit. You, were the you, look on their faces. Are you dude. that guy that you look for any opportunity to take, because I know... He like, doesn't. No. No. Sometimes I have to tell him to. Like, we're at fitness expos. I'm like, dude, take your shirt off. He goes, yeah. hey, you were like uncomfortable. I'm like, no, yeah, dude, I'm like, take I get off. all like red and flushed. I'm like, I don't want to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, if I was built like you. I remember one time I was doing a show, you know, Bert Kreischer? No. Bert, Bert's a comedian, really fun. Bert, uh, me and this guy, Ben Glebe, were on tour together. 
and Bert was reenacting something on stage. It was something horrific. And he goes, he goes, get up here, Eddie and and Ben. And he goes, uh, all right, everybody, take your shirts off. And we were in Georgia, and I had just done my set, and Bert was doing his set, and he was gonna like make us improv this thing. And I just had a really good set. And he goes, take your shirt off. And I'm like, no. He goes, take your shirt off. And I go, no. And he goes, why not? And I'm like, because I'm in shape right now. And it's not going to be funny. Like, <laughs> like the audience. Where's the humor? The, hey, look, I lost 20 pounds. How yeah, do I look? Yeah. We were like, slow clap. Yeah, the audience is going to be like, fuck this fuck you. guy. I just laughed. What a him. loser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, so, so, so like, guys might want to be you, but at the same time, like, fuck this guy. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> fuck this guy. It is in shapeness. Yeah, yeah. So Andrew doesn't like in that, but now he's programmed to take his shirt off. Like, I don't. Even, I think it's just like you know. Well, when people try to take a picture with me, and I just take my he shirt. He just off. takes his shirt off. I don't even think to. Th- he doesn't know. Like, oh, it's an opportunity. He just goes, okay. It's just it's part of the thing. It's part of my job. Um, <laughs> doing my job. So you guys go to a lot of fitness expos and stuff. Probably not enough. I think we should go. No, to more. we don't. I think we should go to more. Something's wrong with the majiggers. No, it's it. I just want to make sure. Yeah. you got to keep that tight. So we should. Yeah. We just, we should put yeah. just put my throat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need oh. lessons on that. Me. Just try it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want lessons. Okay? No, I, I, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try shit. No, I do. I do two shows. I used to do this show, and I did talking shit. And the talking shit, the most horrible things that have ever been said in the history of the world have been said on that show. Oh, really? And now that I have a kid, I'm like, I can't do that show anymore. Two kids, and I'm oh, like, yeah. I gotta calm down. And I still say, I was telling a story about how, when I got like thought I had gonorrhea on two episodes ago on this one, and I'm yeah. like, why? Why can't I stop? Why do I have to still talk about this stuff? Yeah, it's, I'm a father, for God's sakes. <laughs> You're teaching him well. Let it all out. I know, but I let it out on stage a little bit. Uh, I've More on podcast? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm out of stories. Non- nothing crazy happens to oh, me. Right. Anymore. It's like, where do you get your new material from? You you make your stories before 40, and then you just tell them after 40. You know a good one? I, I look, Louis C.K. or Wait, no. Jim Gaffigan, who the fuck is it? People just talk about their kids eventually. Yeah, that's what yeah. happens. That's all I do. It was, I think it started with CK. It was, he really like led the make fun of your kids movement. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was it great. It was great how he did it, too, calling them shitheads and assholes. Because and, um, you know like people would get so upset about that. And it's like you still, you know, it's not like you don't love your kids. You love your kids so much. But my daughter, I was surfing with her the other day. She, she goes, uh, I taught her the word douchebag. How old is she? Four. That's yeah. That's appropriate. <laughs> and I thought you would say like two. <laughs> she can't stop using it now. Really? Oh. It's got to be so endearing. <laughs> but it is. But she's loud now. She'll be like, Dad, Dad. What some guys like kept like dropping in on us, on us. Which he's like, okay, forty year old man dropping in on a four year old. You, you should get the wave. Are you happy? Yeah. And my daughter just went, what's this douchebag doing? <laughs> oh, my God, and yes. I, and I wanted to go over to him and be like, do you know that a four-year-old knows what you... Like, if she <laughs> has it figured out, you need to change what you're doing in life. Was she right? Yeah, and I also taught her... <laughs> I taught her... Was she right, though? Like, was oh, yeah, a, he was a total douchebag. Was it douche appropriate? Bag. Oh, he was being a douchebag. Total yeah. douchebag. It That's all started... Beautiful. There were these guys... I didn't know she knew the word. There were these guys taking... Uh, pictures of them in front of their Lamborghinis uh, on the Malibu Canyon yeah. one day and they caused traffic and I went this this is what caused it from the back seat I hear douchebags oh damn you're and so daughter was, again yeah and I was like you just said that perfectly and I wow. high fived her yeah. yeah so they're smart now <laughs> anyone's up there like, I don't know you're getting to know now oh, anyone's yeah. taking a selfie up there my daughter goes douchebag and I'm like <laughs> and, all right, is it, you, uh, enough? With <laughs> you guys, out back a little. You got a little past. You've learned good. So overlearned. Two days ago, <laughs> she calls a guy a douchebag, and then I look, and how random is this? I'm just looking in Instagram, you know, where you like probably where I found you guys, you know, when it's like trending stuff or things you should see. This famous rapper was taking the selfie. I'm like, that's the guy that my daughter called a douchebag today. on the side of the road. I saw him taking the picture. Yep. Then I saw the picture. The picture. And he was like, he had two million followers. I forget his name, some dumb name. And uh, <laughs> and I almost wrote, I almost wrote in the comments, yeah, we saw you taking the photo today, and my four-year-old called you a douchebag. Wow, that would be, you didn't write it, though. He was a rapper. I thought he might come over and murder me. Oh, uh, it makes yeah. sense. You know, they, they're a little scary. Or your da- murder your daughter. That'd be even it. worse. You know? Well, you know, right? if it has to be me and her. 
she can't make another me, but I can make another her. That's very true. Yeah. Th- there's that crucial yeah. point right now. Yeah. She's yeah. still under the yeah. line. Yeah. Cut line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to say it's, it's about two. I've upped it to about six now. Oh, about six is yeah. the age at yeah. which you choose her yeah. over you. That's yeah. still young. Yeah. So I, I, I might understand when I'm a father. So people right now are like, who the fuck are these two guys? This is Wadcast, a podcast about yeah, CrossFit. Yeah, I love it. I <laughs> this is all I do. I just shoot the shit. Um, you guys do, you're you're a chiropractor by, by, by trade. Yeah. By choices in my life, I ended up a chiropractor. And I then, chose to be one. And then you ended up. Uh, uh, I, gave up my, I gave up my license. Did so, you really? Yeah, let it expire. Really? And then you got it back. No, I just got it back. <laughs> I like Spy for three years. The reason why I got how it did back, you pass with like a fifty two percent? Well, we don't know if that's the percentage. It's just how it scored. It's wait a you minute. Do the math. You <laughs> sound, well, it's a fifty two percent, but it things way different. You sound like you know your shit really well. How'd you get a fifty percent? Fifty two. Fifty two. Well, it's stupid shit. So we so to retake, I have two choices. So I lo- I let my chiropractic license expire because right. I didn't feel I re- I was wanted to represent the profession. Right. Right. And. But the truth is, over the past few years, I still work with my hands on people. Right. So you need some kind of I, legal. Yes. Right. I still do, and I was like, I'll be a massage therapist. They're like, that's eight months. I'm like, no. Then I'm like, I'll do. I'll get a personal training cert, and I'm looking. I'm like, that's like two months. I'm like, I'm like, well, it's quicker for me to just go get your chiropractor. So I have two choices. Number one, I take my. Um, I have to retake my two years of continuing education hours. So I would have to retake. I would have to complete forty eight hours of continuing education. 24 that in person. That's option one. That. Or option two. That's like a week of work. Well, no, no, but you got to go over the country go to and all places. You only get places. six at a time. Or number two, I retake my part two and part three national boards test, which I haven't taken since 2008. I retake it, which is a $1,500 test. And all I got to do is take it. If I pass it, I get my license. I basically wash the need to do any of those hours. I go, I'm fucking taking it. $1,500. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my dice that that's it. And I studied... For about eight hours before it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You sound like me. <laughs> I haven't touched this material since 2000. This isn't stuff about like, okay, what muscle does this? It is. It's, it's like, what blood panel would you order for like a type two hemo, like type two hemophiliac disease? I'm like, what the fuck? That sounds awful. Right. So I'm like, first of all, I never had to use it in 10 years. So I'm like, I, I studied eight hours and I walked in there and I took it and it's out of 800 and somehow I got like. Oh, I emailed the woman at the board. She goes, nobody in the history that I know of in the history of me, since me being here for 10 years has ever used this as an option. Nobody. I go, batter up. <laughs> Let's fucking do this. I'm still, you're not, I'm not unwavered my decision. You were kind of like somebody that went to, didn't go to law school taking the bar. It felt like it. <laughs> it for, for half of it, it felt like it. I went through a series of like, there was like, 200 questions there was like 40 in a row like in a row that i felt like i was just getting i felt like i had knocked out a punch and i'm just getting kicked on the ground every time i was like give me a breath give me something that's brutal but i but i i fucking passed it that's like i i used to be a so 52 sounds a lot better now doesn't it it sounds great (laughs) exactly (laughs) sounds amazing like a fucking genius now. i feel like i would have gotten like a six (laughs) um and it would just been be like (laughs) random guesses that that (laughs) I, uh, my dad tried to send me to military school when I was a kid and, uh, I got kicked out of every school. And so he was like, that's it. You're going to military school. So he took me down to this hotel where they were coming to like test kids to send them away there. And I took the test and the, 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 uh, when the test result came back, I said, how did I do knowing how I did? And my dad goes, uh, well, the, the general or whatever captain or whatever he says he is said, uh, you're either the dumbest kid. He's ever met, or you're very intelligent hmm. because you got almost every single one wrong. Okay, <laughs> and, and cause that was my plan. I'm like, I'll just fail this thing miserably. And was your goal to make it? Was it your goal? I wanted everyone wrong, and because um, I just I was like, Dad, I'm not going to military school. You, I'll go a I was like, I'll jump the fence. You'll never see me again. So. Uh, so I said, I guess I'm not going there. And my dad goes, no, they said they can't wait to have you. Oh, no. <laughs> this backfired. <laughs> they can't wait. You I did didn't... too well on yeah, failing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you did so well on failing, you impressed them. But Would when... you go? No, no, no. I, I, had to, I had to go see a psychiatrist and then go apologize to all my teachers at school, the, the school I got kicked out of. How old were you? Yeah, I was in eighth grade. On eighth grade. And uh, they let me back in. Oh, my God. And then I just destroyed them. Uh-huh. You remind, you don't remind me. You kind of remind me of Mark Maron. Are you, are you not at Mark? all. No? I know Mark very well. Um, I just 
we just did a show. Do you feel like you have similarities with Mark? Not at all. Really? Not at all. You're like, hell no! <laughs> I like him, but all. no way. No, we've, we've, Mark and I have butted heads throughout the years. Oh, I guess he, he seems easy to butt heads with. Oh, my God. Yeah. We really got into it over this transgender that I had at my show. and a Long story. But um, I had this transgender whip their dick out at my show. and um, Did you record with the that? GoPros here? Um, it was funny because... Uh, my, I, I can't believe I'm telling this on this show. I'm my excited. Side, my sidekick. Huh? So my sidekick on talking shit <laughs> was this guy that was like this homeless guy that I brought in that was like became my best friend, and I used to just torture on a regular basis. We're doing a live show at the LA Podcast Festival, and uh, this, my friend calls me right before I didn't have a guest. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I just like I called everybody that was on the show. I go, just get really fucked up, get really drunk, and we'll get thrown out. It'll be funny. We'll get kicked out. We'll be the talk of the festival. So I go, just get so drunk that you we ruin everything. So Wait, this was you and who? The, the, all the guys that come on my podcast, a bunch of comedians. Oh, so you and the transgender are going to get drunk? No, so the transgender, I don't know about yet. I get a call from one of my comedian friends, and he goes, hey, do you want the number one transgender porn star on your show? Oh, damn. And I go, absolutely. Wow. I mean, that's entertaining. Yeah. So... Um, uh, is her name Vanity? Vanity, I believe is her name. Vanity comes, really nice woman, shows up, sits next to Jason. Wait, woman to, man to woman or woman to man? She was a man. She's a woman now. Okay. She sits next to Jason, the guy I torture and pick on constantly. Oh, he's your co-host. Yeah. I tell her to flirt with him. Yeah. Next thing you know, they're making out. <laughs> they're, they're, they're having a good old time. Does he know? Does, has he ever made out the transgender? Yes, which is great. He, <laughs> he's, been, <laughs> he's been tricked a couple times. He's, and it's like a theme. You didn't so, tell him. So I didn't tell him. Oh, my God. It's a theme. So then, uh, <laughs> so then she whips her boobs out on stage. And security comes. And they're going to like take it. They're like, hey, get her off the stage. We can't blah, 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 blah. So I stop security. I it's walk okay. over to them. And dick. I said to the security guards, I said, hey. I said, if she were a man, would you allow her to be shirtless up there on stage? And the guy goes, well, of course. And I said, well. And I said, uh, if you throw her out of here, uh, I have news for you. That is, that is, that could be considered a man, and you're going to have a huge lawsuit on your hands. So I would not throw her out of here. You're using the new laws. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. working everything you're, you're to keep the show going. backwards. Because I also haven't done my surprise yet to Jason. Oh, right. This is all on the download. So then she's talking poor, and we're asking her questions. And at one point, I go, she's, I, love I look at her, and I go, can you please? I go, you got your boobs out. Can you whip your vagina out? She looks at me like, huh? And I go, can, can, can we see your vagina? And I see the security guards go, no, no. <laughs> and they're like coming towards the stage. And I'm like, do it. And she just whips her dick out. Yeah. And Jason's eyes, when he realizes that he's been, he's been, like, he's like, I've been there before. He's like, oh, not <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> Is he numb to it at this point? Yeah. In a way? The first time it happened. It was at a bar one night, and he was out with a bunch of my friends, and they saw it happen. And he came. He did the like eight mile, like he he dobbed himself in before I could get to him. Hmm. Like he came on the podcast the next night, and he was like, "I made out with a transgender last yeah. night." Yeah, because if we had found out, we would have really had fun with him. But instead, by the way, I've been called transphobic by people that listen to this show. So I'm not being transphobic. I'm just telling you factually what happened. But uh, Jason, uh, he said he met this girl. He's dancing on the dance floor. It's great. They're they're like making out and everything. And then she's like, "You want to go?" And they start walking up the stairs. And as they're walking up the stairs, she goes, "Hope you like penis." And he goes, "Excuse me." <laughs> and that's just she just went, "Hope you like penis." Yeah. And he goes, "Did you just say hope you like penis?" This might not stop him at this point. Though. Yeah. He might just keep going. True. Here. I'm a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and go on. Let's go. And he, and he said. Uh, no, nah, no. And she goes, oh, yeah. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm and she goes, you're really going to do this. And he goes, well, you, you tricked me. This isn't fair. And uh, she's like, I can't believe you're going to play me like this. We just had that moment downstairs and now you're going to. And uh, but because I did have another friend who was so what happened? Nothing. He didn't. Oh, he didn't. No, he didn't. But I had another friend who that was a relatively anticlimactic ending there. I would admit that. Too, yeah, up knew, the steps, fizzled off, just, just a little dud. But if you knew Jason, <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> it's I, enough. I sent him one time. I 
One time I told him I put him on Match.com and I found him a date. Yeah. But I hired a prostitute. Oh, did you really? Oh, this is good. <laughs> Man, this is really pulling on my heartstrings. This is something I've always wanted to do to my friends. Too. Oh, I have done. Remember the movie Cable Guy? Was that the Cable Guy? Remember they, the dude got, uh, Jim Carrey I've got seen his, that in a long time. Yeah, he got his girl. Someone a prostitute. Well, he thought he was falling in love as a prostitute. Yeah, this was a prostitute. You did this. Did it. I, uh... Had him do a hot dog eating contest where he had to watch gay porn and eat hot dogs on his on his knees. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he told me he could beat Kobayashi, and uh, I'm like, you can't beat. What him. is that? Seventy hot dogs? He had to do sixty two hot dogs or oh, sixty eight, I think, on. in twelve minutes. What did he do? Pray nine. He did about fifty. What? But he didn't have to eat the buns. Oh, that was the rule. I want to interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you. No, I don't know. I I. I'm being weird today, but um, you know what it is? I didn't have my O2. I am so obsessed with this recovery drink now. I was posting pictures. My wife was laying in the hospital, lying, laying. I don't know how you say it. She's drinking O2 sports recovery, and I have pictures of her. She's like holding the baby and drinking O2 sports recovery drink, which is it's like my end-all, be-all now. I love drinking this. Uh, because A, it's delicious, but B, it is, in my opinion, the best post-workout beverage that exists. Um, there's a number of reasons why. You know I'm a freak, and you know I investigate, research, all of the stuff that I put into my body. I'm not perfect by any means, but I've, for the longest time, looking for something to replace all those horrible energy drinks. For a while, I was doing coconut water. Um but now I found it, uh, and it's O2 Sports Recovery Drink, and it's a revolutionary post-workout beverage, which blends seven times the oxygen of tap water with electrolytes to help the body process toxins and recover faster. Now, what that means is uh, because there's oxygen going into this, it's taking all the toxins out of your liver, and all the electrolytes that you're talking about, your sodium, your – I th- believe there's potassium in it. I'm not sure exactly. I got to look – Exactly. When I looked at it, it's got a good amount of sodium. Uh, it's not carbonated. Um, and so it's easily drinkable. Like you can just chug this down after you do whatever you do, whatever it be. If you're a runner, you're doing, I don't know, weightlifting, you're swimming, you're anything, CrossFit, whatever you do, this is what you need to drink. It's got, um, Twice the electrolytes, twice the electrolytes of Gatorade, okay? But only two grams of sugar, okay? Did you hear that? Two grams. Uh, all four flavors are non-GMO approved. It's got uh, two grams of sugar, okay? 20 calories in a 16-ounce can. You can drink this, okay? You can drink this, not have to worry. You're not spiking your insulin, none of the bad shit. Two of them have caffeine, two don't. So if you want that caffeine, you want that boost, here's the thing. Their caffeine is good caffeine. It's natural caffeine, which means it's absorbed into the body slower, leaves the body slower, avoiding all those jitters and crash that you get with all those other energy drinks. Here's the here's here's a fun fact, too, about the uh, the volume and electrolyte ratio was modeled off of a 500cc IV bag, okay? So I watched my wife come out of surgery. She said an IV, and I was like, hey. Why don't you drink some of this stuff? Uh, it was invented and created by a CrossFit trainer and a medical doctor. So, you know, it's in the family. Uh, you can trust the doctor. You can trust the trainer. Uh, it's Look, I want this thing to explode. I was just telling somebody, a whole bunch of guys about it the other night, who their kids are, are in sports and they were giving their kids Gatorade. I was like, stop that. Stop that. Get yourself some O2. I told them where to go. You're going to go to drinko2.com, drinko2.com, okay? Drinko2.com, and how about 20% off your first purchase with the code WODCAST, that's drinko2.com, and you're going to get 20% off for WODCAST. Go check them out at at drinko2recovery, drink, at drinko2recovery on Instagram, but then go to their website, which is drinko2.com. That's O2 Sports Recovery Drink. Use Wadcast at checkout, and you're going to get yourself 20% off. All right, I've talked about these guys before. I'm going to talk about them again because I've become so excited about them that I got 
uh, I got a uh, stick of it for like every one of my family members. And that's native. Uh, native deodorant is, uh, I hate seeing people using bad stuff, stuff that's not healthy, stuff that's not good for them. And, uh, you know, there's, there's some stuff out there that, you know, you know, it, it's not good for you. And when you're putting stuff on your body, your skin again is it's got pores in it. Stuff goes right into your bloodstream. So you want to make sure that what you're putting on your skin, you're really, really careful about it. Well, native deodorant not only smells good, keeps you from, I, I don't know how they keep you from sweating. I, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's the best thing I've ever used. Um, my wife found it first, then she told me about it. I started using it and now everyone I know, uh, I had to send some over to Australia to my friend Allie because she loved it so much when she was here in the States. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Check out all you've got to do, see how everybody else feels. They've got 7,000 five-star reviews. Okay, so it's formulated, this is important, without aluminum, parabens, and talc. None of those things are good for you. They don't put any of those in there. It's filled with all natural ingredients found in nature, such as coconut oil. That works as an antimicrobial. Shea butter, that's your moisturizer and your emollient. And tapioca starch, which is what absorbs the wetness. They're made in USA, okay? And the ingredients are sourced from around the world thoughtfully. They don't test on animals. They get free shipping and returns. Um, you know, it's, it's the best stuff out there. Trust me. And if you don't believe me, uh, look into like aluminum. So, you know, some deodorants have aluminum in them and that may be linked to some serious health ramifications, including breast cancer and Alzheimer's. So native's got none of that in it. All right. Um, and although Native's priced at a little bit of a premium when compared to conventional deodorants, it's safe and effective. You're talking about your body here. And I know you CrossFitters, you take care of yourself. Well, get yourself some, some Native. And it comes in a wide variety of uh, scents for men and women. Okay? So uh, they've got coconut and vanilla. I think that's the one I brought with me. Lavender and rose. I've been using the cucumber and mint at home. Oh, eucalyptus and mint. I want to try that too. Um Here's the deal. You subscribe, you're going to save 17%. Save $2 per stick. Have Native conveniently delivered to your door every one, two, three, or four months. So just figure out how often you buy deodorant. Subscribe, you never have to go to the store again. It shows up, and you're going to save $2 a stick. It's probably going to be as uh, expensive as any other deodorant you buy then. All right? All right. So you want to get it? You want a deal? Uh, here's what you do. You're going to get 20% off your first purchase if you visit Native deodorant.com that's native n-a-t-i-v-e deodorant.com use the promo code wadcast during checkout all right that's native deodorant.com 20 percent off if you use the promo code wadcast i just wanted to stop to talk to you about whoop what is whoop it's a performance tool that is changing the way people track their fitness and optimize their training i wear a whoop hunter wears a whoop uh it's a wrist-worn heart rate monitor that pairs to an app on your phone and provides daily personalized analytics and insights on recovery, strain, and sleep. You're going to know when your body's recovered or when it needs to rest by getting to know your nervous system through heart rate variability and quality of sleep. It automatically tracks your workouts and gets strain scores that let you know how strenuous training was on your body. And see even more data like average heart rate, max heart rate, calories burned. You can get optimal sleep times based on how strenuous your day was. And you're going to track sleep performance with insight into your sleep cycles and stages of sleep, sleep quality, sleep consistency. How about this? They, Whoop, just released the new Whoop Strap 3.0 which includes new upgrades to hardware and unlocks a suite of new software uh, to their app. The Whoop Strap 3.0 now has five days of battery life. That's five days. An improved strap, a live heart rate monitoring, in addition to a handful of new in-app features. Okay? It's it's incredible. And uh, Whoop's provided an offer for my listeners to get 30 bucks off their purchase with the code WADCAST. Just go to whoop.com. That's whoop. Whoop.com. I almost said whoop. There it is. Uh, but it's whoop.com. Use the code WADCAST at checkout. You're going to save 30 bucks, and you're going to optimize the way you train. Put in WADCAST at checkout for $30 off your whoop man- membership. Man- man- membership. Wow, am I cranked up today. 
All right. So check that out. It is unbelievable. Where do you guys shoot all this stuff that you do? Do you have a studio? The office. He's up north Uh, a little bit. It's like 25 minutes north from here. Okay. That's why I'm like, I'm not leaving for the first half of the day. Right. Plus his nice little podcast. He gets up at noon. Yeah. Why am I sleeping? Yeah. You did another podcast, right? Yeah, I did one. Um, Mark Immelman P- on PGA, it was PGA Tour podcast. It's pretty cool, exciting. What go from golf PGA. to just dirty oh, okay. freaking comedy? I just love it. I'll spin ball. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> well, on transgender though, you know what's interesting? I just got back. You like if you're looking for good content, I just got back from Burning Man. Yeah, I mean, like my feeling on transgender, I'm like I'm, I'm like okay, you know what? I'll probably get used to it over time. I'm still kind of yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. But I'm like going like ah, yeah. I'll get through yeah. it. There, there's like lines. There's like 20 people in line. There's a urinal, and the person in front of me is like whatever. It's a it looks like a woman with a wig. I'm like, hurry up. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish it and go. That's what I was like, saying. When, that's the when, place to get used to it. When North Carolina <laughs> wanted to ban transgenders from the bathroom, I'm like, didn't, haven't we always had co-ed bathrooms in our own homes? And like, when you go in, mm-hmm. who gives a fuck? I've always been good with women walking in the guy's bathroom. I'm like, oh, hey. I've always thought that that policy in North Carolina for no transgenders is the most homoerotic what is policy. It? They were trying to say that you had to use the bathroom with the... The gender you were born with. Oh, and that's so, getting confusing now. See, well, mm-hmm. well, on the signs, I mean, it's not who, men, woman. It's just like a, now it's like a note. And who's going to be there to like check them? It's yeah. like all it's right, in braille underneath yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> just, but, they're, they're, but someone's just cupping people. As they but watch I just, them. I just, <laughs> what you got? Yeah, yeah. What's that? that? Hey, that there's a lot of stuff down there. Oh. Uh, but I always thought state. it was kind of homoerotic that they would make that policy because it's these old white men that make the laws in North Carolina like when I'm in the bathroom and I'm standing at the urinal I want to look down and I want to see a dick <laughs> and when I look next to me I want to see a dick and next to me a dick I want to see dicks all around me I want to see dicks that we, I want to see born with dicks factory dicks <laughs> yeah. wow this show's just gone off the rails yeah we're talking about fixing shit I blame right you I blame Dr. Mi- Dr. Oh, yeah. Mike. Oh, claimed, I've been known to sidetrack things. Who is a 52% doctor. Uh, yeah, 52% doctor. after eight years. He is. When you you don't to- want to come to me with your blood results and ask me if you have hemophilia. You don't want to do that. You didn't want to do that in 2008 with this knowledge fresh in my head. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you, you scare me. I'm not going to lie to you. Now You're that not. I've, I've, I've watched you, you know your shit, but I'm never asking you a real true medical question now. Oh, God. I got I, enough of those every day, please. I, I, I can call, just reduce one a day. By in ten years, I'll have like fifty a day, and I'll be great. How many are you getting, honestly? He doesn't answer them. I'll answer them. <laughs> but we probably get. I don't even. Katie, how many messages? What do we get a month? Ten, hundreds, oh, thousands, thousands. I don't like hundreds of emails, hundreds of that's, DMs. That's basically of that's why. Everywhere. That's why I wanted to do the show with you. I wanted full access to you. <laughs> 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 I bother Kelly Surratt. Literally once a month. I bother Dr. Drew probably twice a week. Uh, Dr. Drew always just tells me to take an antibiotic, and Kelly tells me to take a Valium. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelly's like, Eddie, take a Valium, shut up, and I'll call me in a week. <laughs> Super active well, brain. They're, just they're go both, to sleep. They're both in alignment with their beliefs, so yeah. you, know, you just hear from multiple people the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so definitely. Uh, you de- Here's the one. Do you know how to do the cuboid whip? Yeah, probably. Do you really? Fifty-two percent. This was in the fifty-two percent. This was in the forty-eight. Cuboid whip. No, I guess I don't. I was thinking of a. It's an, I was thinking an adjustment, but there, I'm like, there ain't no way he's talking about that. <laughs> it sort of is an adjustment. What is it, Andrew? Is that it? I don't know. Are you? Do it. Are, you're not a doctor of chiropractic. No, no. Yeah, I met him, and he got me to avoid that process. <laughs> <laughs> what of getting adjusted? <laughs> Uh, no, of, of getting a $250,000 loan. Oh, you were going to go be one? Yeah. yeah. Now what do you do besides just stand there with your shirt off? I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and this. That's the best life ever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I just look like this. That's it. If it was that, if it was only that easy, we, we, we won't. Yeah, that, that's, that's, not, that easy, that's not it. Are you, the, are you the brains behind the operation? Yeah. Are you really operations? No. He's a lot behind the operations. Operations, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, how? When did you guys start getting big? This because you got a really big following on Instagram. I've always been big. I know. <laughs> we we started. It was two thousand. Well, I started making videos in two thousand nine. Really? I made like for YouTube. Yeah. In between nine they and fifteen, funny. I probably had a few videos with over three hundred thousand views. Just wow. ran, just random ones that would take off. I'd make. I don't know. Maybe like thirty, forty, fifty, and then he went in two thousand fifteen. 
he went to I had to do my fucking chiropractic continuing education hours right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he came with me. And I was a chiropractor. Remember I, I like got the chiropractic ticket or some shit oh yeah yeah he was i think you, you're both like look if we can split this i can get my hours in like <laughs> yeah, you go here getting, i'll go there I'm getting his signature it'll form. all come together as one how did you guys meet he was a student of mine i taught oh, i used to Jesus teach Christ. i know <laughs> i used to teach uh-huh this is and like, always said i was the only one who made it <laughs> this, <laughs> like, this is like the bad news bears actually <laughs> made it to the world series the little league world Isn't that series. An inspiring story though. it is it is <laughs> so you were a student of me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 I watch your videos. They're really funny. I'm just waiting for one of these times, like the way you like abuse them, where you like stand here and just uh, like just a a punch. A just lot of people, people say people that. Wait for it. It could happen. They wait for it. Just get a glove. And just to put the glove on and do one of those like jackass ones. People always want to know, like, because I got the red stick. Like, when do you get hit him with a stick? <laughs> They do. It's like a suspense that they're it's always a, like, there's it's like just a the back of people's heads. There's, like like a, there's a fetish for it. Though. Well, oh definitely God, from, I'd say, probably a third of our audience. I was just going to say, you probably have a whole bunch of... Uh, Gay audience. Yeah, but the but they're giving you, like... I had Robert Opes on the show, who's the strongest, one of the strongest men in the world. And he was telling us, I didn't realize this about those huge fucking guys. Like, they're huge. They're, like, muscular, but there's a lot of fat on them, too. He gets requests for his dirty underwear. Oh, all the time! Like people, like would I don't. Pay do you get him. dirty underwear? Uh, I used to get those requests. I don't get that stuff anymore. Which is the nice. best request we I had was like some that. guys like well, I'll stand. He said he would. Uh, he'd give us ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this was fun. Ten thousand like, dollars, and all we have to do is stand on his chest for twenty minutes. His stomach, not stomach. his chest. Stand on his like, stomach. For 20. Do, you, do you have his number? I was like, you know what? Maybe it was like. 20,000. It was enough to raise an eyebrow. I was like, 10 each. 10 each. There it is. I was like, you know what? You know why I don't like this story? Because it sounds like you didn't do it. We yeah. didn't. I know that we, we never followed we didn't follow up. up. We were, I was very down. Yeah. I was like, I'll do, but like, what does that mean though? Is he, jerking I'll stand off? there naked if I need to. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's he doing? Can I put a cover down below? I can't see below a line. You know what I mean? I'm like wrapped up with like a parachute looking thing. Blocks underneath me. A friend of ours was uh, walking, my foot. Was walking down Lincoln Boulevard in uh, <laughs> Venice, and a guy pulled up next to him and goes, <laughs> a guy pulled up next to him and goes, hey, I'll give you $50 for your underwear. And he was like, he's like, I had to look and see which ones I had yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I was like, all right. <laughs> How do you, but then you, like, is it worth the process of like, you got to go find a bathroom? Well, maybe? no, he walked behind a, a yeah. dumpster behind Starbucks, took his pants off, took the underwear, handed him the guy. The guy gave him 50 bucks, and then he goes, you want me to meet you here next week? <laughs> 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 That's good. Yeah. He look, I'm looking, I'm like, I'm at the bottom of the barrel yeah, underwear. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The laundry yeah, yeah, days yeah, yeah, do. Yeah. I'm definitely, <laughs> these are Lululemons that are like 20 sizes too big. I like fold them over. So this will be, I do for $20 for these ones. I had a roommate once walking through my room, walking through my room, wearing my underwear and they were inside out. And I go, John, what, 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 Hey, stop. Why do you have on my underwear and why are they inside out? And he goes, he looks down like he didn't even know. And he goes, Oh, um, uh, I ran out and I already ruined the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's a good line. Yeah. Well, that's also a guy that I took him on vacation with my family. He didn't bring toiletries and used my mom's and my sister's toothbrush. Smart. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So, no to self. Check. He is now the CEO. Travel partners, he is, toiletries. He is now the CEO of one of the biggest banks in America. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yep, swear to God. Damn, that's and a good I, story. I won't name it, but I almost just did. Sounds like the bad like, news bears right there. Yeah, all my friends are idiots. That's uh, great. Yeah, I mean, that's... It makes it entertaining. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I got into comedy because I was like, oh, I'll get all my idiot friends, and we'll all go make TV shows together, but they all became like really high up in corporations and things and now I'm like hey and they're like don't fucking say my name ever <laughs> <laughs> they're like seriously don't no photos of me my friends aren't on social media at all they're like I can't be seen I can't be talked about I, and they'll come to my shows they keep a distance they're see like, I I do like to be the person off stage I am on I, li- I enjoy doing that I like to be transparent yeah it's great then, enjoy- then they can't get you I enjoy I, I do it when people come up to me and they go you're you're just like how I was hoping you'd be, I'm, or, or I thought you'd be. I'm like, that is good to hear, because I definitely don't like putting two faces on. So when you people go- don't say that to me, because I have my shirt on usually. Oh right. So when you guys do, I like who you are. when you do your like online, if people get a subscription and they have like access to you yeah. for, do you still 
act like this with them. I mean, I act like I would say this podcast is is, is slight stretch. Okay, yeah. some of the terminology I use. You said jizz. I said jizz. I wouldn't say jizz yeah. in there. <laughs> no. But what I would if, swear. What if jizz came out while you were? Uh, I would say semen. Someone. I would say semen. Has that ever happened? <laughs> no. While you're just usually someone. farts. It does happen. Oh, yeah. Side posture. Yeah. I, I, good one, man. I've had some good ones, too. Even like Right in my gr- face. Like, oh, right. Kind of like massaging someone's piriformis. Yeah. Right in the glute. Just oh. getting down there with the elbow. And his ass is like two inches from my face. Yeah. Just rips it. The shorts oh. like lifted. Oh. It was cool, man. You could see it coming through. Learning experiences. I would not uh, I would not like that. That's why we're like, we're, we got to... I put my fucking time in working. I worked about with ten, over ten thousand people one on one. If it was a queef, put my time. If it was a queef, I would like it. I would find that really funny. S- some are. Yeah. Most are just fine. Yeah. I'll take. I'll take a queef over a fart every day. Me too. I'll do it. I'll put my money in the pot on that. Do those happen a lot? No. I hear those in yoga. Yeah, in yoga. Cool. Yeah, you can hear a queef across the room. You can. <laughs> you can across the room. <laughs> Yo, I know a lot. Of, I date a yoga instructor. And she's like, yeah, there's a high amount of queefs. There's certain positions that they know are just like not queef friendly, yeah. you know? Very queefable positions. <laughs> we're, we're moving into queef time. <laughs> <laughs> Be very careful. Because there's like that in a fart, though. I feel like I got control over a fart. I don't know if a woman can control that like I can't control. Katie, can women control that? She's like with strong She's pelvic, the pelvic floor. health expert. <laughs> that you can control a queef? Oh, um, to some extent, depending on the Can you control a fart or a queef more? A fart. Right. Because wow. there's a muscle, right? You got the sphincter, holds it shut. I think queefs are what's causing global there's warming. There's no queefinter that holds it tight. A oh. queefinter. <laughs> queefinter. Queefinter. Uh, but couldn't the Kegel exercises control the. It can some, it just depends on the descent of the pelvic organs. Like Whoa. Also the, also, the pelvic floor muscles are above queef zone. So if they squeeze tight, queef zone's below that. So it's relatively queef independent, pelvic floor <laughs> muscles. And queef I like, I like the, just the intelligent answer and then just I, I try to summarize Katie's answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, how'd I do? And then the 52% of that answer over here. <laughs> I feel like everything that you explained to us is probably 52% accurate. <laughs> well, it needs to be. It's 100% accurate as far as I know. But I, I, I really – what happens is, is doctors, they, they, they become institutionalized with the way of talking because they just keep learning at a higher level. Right. But no one teaches them how to deconstruct it simple again. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I believe that I, like, I can speak at a normal level mm-hmm. and speak it with normal words. Like I've been, I like left the shell of that doctor, and now I could speak kind of like a fucking right, right, idiot as right, well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you go words. I like how you looked at me like, I can speak your language, Eddie, <laughs> like an idiot. You just looked at me like, uh, do you, am I translating to you, idiot? <laughs> well, if a doctor says your neurosynaptic pathways are overloaded, just what? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, okay. You so have- oh, you're stressed out. Yeah, you're stressed <laughs> that's, that's, out. That's the story of my life. I went to, uh, I played it on this show once, and they made me delete it out. The uh, the producer engineer was like, you need to delete that because it was illegal. I'm not surprised. I recorded somebody <laughs> illegally. I I do it whenever I go to a doctor. If it's something complex or something, I'll I'll record it so I can go back and listen to it afterwards and be like, they said this, 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 and this. Oh, yeah. So I. I, I don't want to play it because I'll have to delete it out again. But I went to this neurologist. I got Bell's palsy once. Sure. And after it was over, they said, go for a follow-up with a neurologist. I go, UCLA system sends me this woman. I swear to God, she was like, if you're 52%. Guys, Bell's palsy, your face is droopy on one yeah, side. Yeah, she was 1%. I've talked about it so much. Everybody oh, knows they know. about my Bell, Bell's palsy. I got it from doing Murph, the workout Murph. Yeah. And, uh, but like this woman it's a bitch that was this Asian woman that was like, Hello, and I was like, oh, I'm here to, to my follow up for my bill. Are you have bell palsy? And I was like, Yeah. Uh, and she's like, Okay. Uh, 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 how you feel? And I'm like, uh, Well, I'm having these fasciculations all over my body now. And I was like, I don't know if it's because of the steroid they gave me or because it's, you know, I'm low in magnesium. And she's like, oh, Okay, look at me. Uh, look at the other side. Look to the other side. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, okay. And I'm like, um, 
No, but like my muscles are twitching all over my body. Like I think I have like Parkinson's or ALS or something. And she's like, oh, ALS, uh, no, I'm, uh, you're twitchy. And, I'm like, <laughs> twitchy. <laughs> and I recorded her. I was playing it and everybody's like, that's not, that's not a doctor. You didn't go to see a doctor. And I go, I don't, I don't think I did. But maybe she just dumbed it down for me. 52%. You're twitchy. You're twitchy. <laughs> You're twitchy. Right? I see the point. Maybe she just dumbed it down to a level that took you off of the diagnosis. And you're like, oh, man, twitchy. Yeah, she twitchy is with her. How much chocolate are you going to eat? I was just dark nibble at it. How do you do this? I eat a shitload, dude. dude it's because it's the only sugar you can have, huh? He eats so much To look food. like that. I eat a lot of He eats I eat so everything. much. Do you he really? chickens on chickens. Yeah, but like, do you eat shit food at all? Um, I think I eat okay. organic shit food. Okay, I'm the same way. Less I'm eating organic fried food. I <laughs> yeah, I feel less worse about yeah. this choice. <laughs> less worse is always a but good But you're like, what, word. 4% body fat or something? It was. was I, think it I, really? I think I, I started eating more. Were you, how low were you? I was like 3.4. No. Oh, my God. I didn't like that. I wasn't feeling good. Do you so. do bodybuilding? What's your... What's your CrossFit. Sh- oh, really? <laughs> CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that all you do? That's all That's, he does. Uh, no, well, the last, I'd say, five months, I've been doing a lot of Pilates and bar and, mm-hmm. and Legree and just a bunch of different, like, movement shit like that that feels great. Yeah. Why, CrossFit was beating the shit out of you? No. Katie loves to do that. It was beating shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> so so I started doing that stuff with her, and I, I don't know, I just feel great. What, I've actually been lifting heavier. What CrossFit doing you? That shit. Really? Well, I go to Dynamis. Okay. Up here, and then I go to Summit in North Carolina, Asheville. Okay. I spent half my time in Asheville. Oh. Here's the Anders, one of the most consistent human beings you'll ever meet with working out and anything. Really? It's literally, you, you go machine every day. day. Like, there's no... So, yeah. No, no day off. Well, there is, but it's so consistent. Like, five, six days a week for, like, seven years straight. You know, <laughs> you're not. Your rest, day, <laughs> <laughs> your rest day is really programmed. It's like... It's programmed. No, I mean, Thursday... Thursday's not a rest day. It's an active recovery. And I'll do a bunch of end range strengthening work. Um, and then Sunday is just complete rest day. That's just how it's been for the last. Wow. Before I, CrossFit. Even. I could just never keep a consistency like that at all. It's so I've hard. had a tendency I even, to go you know, I hardcore. Travel. Then I, then I kind of, then I go to get into golf or then I go into spearfish. Yeah. Or then I'm just like, I'm like not doing much for a few weeks and I get back into lifting. I definitely bounce around. Yeah, I, I, the same thing happens to me. I'll mountain bike for a while, and, oh, then yeah. I'm like, and then I'm like surfing. And when I surf, I don't want to be sore. So I'll go, oh, there's a swell coming. So I lay off the weights for a while because I'm like, I can't be out there yeah, struggling right. around, just going, uh, I, right. can't, I can't paddle. And Even I, golfing sore is so hard to do. Yeah, yeah. It's so It difficult. throws off golf. It throws off golf. Yeah. It does. Um, but you, why Asheville? Why are you there half the year? That's where Katie is. She's okay. got she's got two little ones, and that's where her, her ex is. And so you guys go back and forth. Yep. So I'm traveling two weeks out of the month. Holy so shit! I, I still get my workouts in regardless. Of course he does. <laughs> and uh, and then you run the company from Everywhere. the computer, all over, yeah, and in yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you do uh, one on ones with people on the computer. How's it work? Explain S- to me how it sure. works. Go ahead. Sure. So we have an online community. Right. People, people get in the program. We encourage them to get into the community. It's not built into the program just yet. And we're working toward that. So they go to Facebook. We have private communities that are probably the most amazing transformational communities that I've ever seen. Like 70,000 comments a month. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, so we have six groups on there, upwards of 2,000 in each group. And we have now five coaches that, that help to facilitate that growth. And we encourage people to video record themselves, put the videos up online. They analyze those videos, put in their comments of what they, what they see that they're fucking up on, what mm-hmm. they need to improve on. And then the community comes in and says, hey, you're doing a great job. Here's some other things that I think you could work on. And then the coaches may or may not come in behind that and say, here's some other things that you should focus right. on. And then they'll post some more videos the following week. And it'll be better. And people just continue to improve. All while they're working through the Move You Method, which is a step-by-step online program. They work through that. And then they, they check their progress and stay motivated through the community where there's coaching calls. And so Andrew's lead of head of community. So he's the top. And there's coaches underneath him. And there's other people their future coaches rising up as well and so it's a it's a it is definitely a symbiotic 
um, community where everyone helps each other. It's so awesome. when they get in the Facebook thing, is that free for them to just It's get... included. Okay, so yep. that's part of it. Yeah, it's part okay. of it. The ones who do that achieve the most success by far, bar none. I mean, there's a ton of friends I'd want to send to this. I just sent a, a, a buddy of mine who actually sells uh, surgical, uh, the 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 device they use when they fuse your spine together. Sure. And he's like got the hardware. A, yeah. And he's got a bad spine right now and he's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, don't go get surgery. Don't Mm-mm. go do what you sit in on every day before you do that. Go like, check this out or check this out. Like I'm like, don't, trust me. Well, Andrew, three surgeons said he needed surgery. That was his whole journey. It was yeah, crazy. Yeah. I had an L4, L5 herniation, 10 millimeters sciatica for like two years. Oh, 10 millimeters. I, yeah. I actually came across, I, I was working through it. I was, the surgeons told me I needed surgery. I was doing all the medications. I was drugged out of my fucking mind for like working. four months of treating people in the office. He's like, Mike, I don't know what happened for the last four months. I'm like, dude, you've been working on people. What are you talking about? Like, You're making me nervous. <laughs> He's like, oxycodone's fun. <laughs> so I uh, got away from that stuff, and I just I kept doing like super basic shit that my PT gave me the printout sheet of stuff I should do. Some other things that I would learned in the office, just doing whatever I could made um very minor improvements over that two years and near the end of that i kind of ran into a crossfit coach it was like i'm like dude crossfit's going to destroy me yeah he's like no not not, not coach he's like not the way i'm going to teach you and he he taught me how to do bridges he taught me how to do just the most basic movements yeah. and and i started to explore who those was movements. who was that coach his name was mike koopman yeah uh, where's he at he's, he's not doing it anymore wow. yeah he's, and then andrew what he learned like I thought I knew bridges. I thought I knew all these things. I had I have advanced training, not only Cairo school, but all the certs with movement and rehab, mm-hmm. like just endless. He goes and learns that. He comes back and reteaches me the actual. There's more depth to these movements. Like, oh, holy shit! Like, well, this is the solution. I think I, I really taught a lot of patience at the same time. Like before, I kind of like started teaching Mike. I spent hundreds of hours just teaching patience and working on it myself through the injuries, and exploring new cues new patterns new things like that shoulder blade thing is something i figured out yeah that's magical and that was shoulder you know, scoop was huge for all of our oh, patients. i saw your video on that dude i yeah. think that's a revolutionary move he i don't know anyone else i, I believe he's the founder of that movement he, i've i've seen people talk about it though it's powerful uh, because uh you know that's that's a big issue and problem with people you know using the, the I, I had the problem i had the impingement because sure. of that myself and and every doctor I, I went to two doctors i went to the mets doctor and i went to the dodger in new york and in la both of them were like let me get in there all right I, I, so we'll I, get in there we'll clean it up i'll, I'll get in there you, you're gonna be better in no time just six months of rehab and you're gonna six wait would they tell me six weeks you'll be at uh you know, 60% and then six months, you'll be at like 95%. We'll get it. And I went mm-hmm. and then I saw two physical therapists who were like, don't get that operated on yet. And they both were like, I think you have an impingement. I think we need to just work on some things. And sure enough, hey, wow. There you go. It's perfect. So there was, and for those of the audience that doesn't know impingement, you're probably getting a pain in the front of your shoulder. It's a pinch. You lift your arm up over your head or do a push up. You get like a pinch or a pain right there. Just reaching for a fucking coffee cup. Reaching for a coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. And, and what we've discovered, we have such a large audience that we, and so many members we work with, is that when people learn, the reason that's occurring because they can't control their shoulder blade. So their shoulder blade is completely, they're oblivious to, and they lift their arm, their arm bone hits their shoulder blade over and over, and it grinds down the tendon. And so what the surgeon does, they go, okay, I'm just going to cut, I'm going to cut you a groove in your shoulder blade. <laughs> So you can it, that impingement will go through the groove I cut for you. Meanwhile, when people learn how to set their scapula, scoop mm-hmm. their shoulder blade in position, then they move their arm. It's like the cut was never needed because they they move their shoulder blade out of the the injurious position. So this, and voila, they're better. This sounds a little bit like I just had uh, some doctors on the uh, the functional medicine kind of people, and it's where it's I've decided I go to UCLA now for my GP, but I'm like. I, we just disagree on everything and I'm joining this because they'll go like I had a a bacterial infection in my stomach and they was sort of something like some kind of virus and they're like oh we want to put you on Cipro and and Flagyl I think it was called or Flagyl and I just looked up everything they're like that's going to destroy you she's a nurse they're like that's going to that's going to destroy your gut biome uh, and then you're going to have more diarrhea so uh, they're like why don't you try to take some probiotics and some colostrum and blah 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 and that fixed it. There you go. And so instead of going the doctor route, I went a little mm-hmm. homeopathic. And so 
Uh, so since then, I've decided I'm I'm going. There's this functional medicine thing in L.A. that I'm just going to go to. And I looked at the doctors. The doctors are all, you know, like, you know, really qualified. And I was like, why don't I? And my, my daughter already goes. Whatever there. that means. Yeah, I mean, they're not 52%, but. I mean, I mean, if they have a lot of letters after their name, they're very well qualified. That's what I care about. <laughs> That's all that matters. You know what? I, do? <laughs> I, I, just, I just look at their college. And if it has a shitty football team. Then I know they're a good doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I decide. And like, damn, there might be some actual truth funny. to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they have a good, you know, like pen, yeah, good. Uh-huh. Shitty football team, probably good doctor. Uh huh. Harvard, shitty football team. Do they That's even what, have a football team? I don't team. even think so. No, they don't have one. That's how I do it. That's how I qualify my doctors. It might be better qual- a better method than most people use. If they went to Alabama. <laughs> Not my doctor. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> not, not my doctor. Ohio I'm, State? I'm, I'm, out the door. Out the door. Michigan might be the only Holy one. Holy shit. You were Ohio. One. I was. That was Kent State. Oh, uh, geez. You consider you me. There? That's not even a college. Well, I went there for undergrad. Yeah. So don't be mistaken. I wouldn't even call that undergrad. Well, I got in there. That's they let a, me in. Uh, would they let anyone in? Almost. I was there I, once. I pushed the limits. <laughs> I, I went there on a like a fraternity trip once when I was in college. I got kidnapped by the pledges, and they took me. And uh, there were these guys that, that like we ran into at like, a liquor store or something. They took us out of the street, and they were like, follow us. We're like, all right. And they stopped in the middle of the street, got out of their car, and we they opened up their trunk, and we thought they were getting out guns. And we're like, oh, fuck. And it was like, fuck. And they pulled out bowling balls. And they go, street bowling. And they just rolled these bowling balls down. Hills. Yeah, and we're like, the fuck is this right. town? And then we went to this other place. And the oh, guys, I've been with people who have done that, but go on. The fraternity guys were like, hey, come on. <laughs> we're, going, we're going across the street to the laundromat. We're like, why? They're like, oh, you'll see. <laughs> And we go over and they put the pledges in the dryers. Oh, we go. We see who can stay in the longest. (laughs) Wow. And then Uh, I don't know who would even turn with the person in there. Yeah. But Kent State was a fucked up place. Oh, that was a Kent? Yeah. Maybe that's where the bowling. Maybe because I haven't street bowl, but I've seen it done. You just roll down a fucking hill. Yeah. Just, just irregardless to anybody or anything else other than just. So dangerous. So dangerous. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Idiots. It's a fourteen pound ball. Just None of that going on in street. Nashville. Flying down the street. If any, Nashville, if there be no. any city in <laughs> North Carolina, it'd probably be Asheville. They'll probably do that. Well, then again, no, Asheville's too hipsterish. It, it is hipster. It is they, a, they're busy drumming. And yeah, it's drum circles. Drum and, circles, dude. I was fascinated with that city. Fascinated. Just so you go there? Oh, I've just been there once. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I was like, wow, we've got a guy with a southern draw playing a banjo with dreadlocks. It looks like a surfer. I'm like, I, my brain has never seen this combination. Smells like a combination of whiskey and patchouli. Whiskey and patchouli. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird They place. got great food, too. Oh my God, I love yeah. food in I, I, You know what? I actually like it more than some of the stuff out here. Oh, man, I yeah. loved it. Crushed it. Cool city. Yeah. I'm excited to go back. Yeah, my, fa- my in-laws are from North Carolina, so I spend a lot of time there. And uh, they live up in the mountains of Boone. You know where Boone is? She's not in her head, yes. You know, I don't know where yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, Banner Elk, that's where they... But they've just moved down to Charlotte, so uh, they're maniacs. It's another story uh, for another day. Did uh, you mention Fix Your Shit yet? Not at all. I what don't care about fuck? it. What the fuck? He said know. it at the beginning. Oh, you somewhere. did? I don't want to talk about it. It's good. <laughs> about Who came up with that? I said it in a video randomly one time, mm-hmm. and it just got, it just got quoted by like... So many people. 100 people, and I, then I said it again in another video, and got quoted. I'm like, well, you know, it makes sense. You got to fix your shit. So this thing's pretty successful, and I don't think you need any more success because I think it could just go really badly. Oh no, we have a long, we have millions of people to help. I millions. Okay, as long as you keep it helpful, because I just see you becoming <laughs> this like crazy millionaire living on a yacht nah. and shooting things from your with your guns. I don't up. need a yacht. Yeah, to I sh- could see that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need a yacht to shoot things from. No. I'm happy shooting them here. I'd like some more range in the backyard. He's always been shooting shit though. I've been shooting shit. Yeah. I just can, then can get you know bigger guns. I got to give you your production value is incredible. Oh, thank you. Incredible. Come from a comedian. I appreciate it. I really do come from a comedian. Well, well. I do a, so a little bit of filmmaking and stuff like that. And I was like, geez, who? What, for, I was like, I don't know how I stumbled on you. I'm like, who are these fucking guys? And where this production value is incredible. And, uh, the, you know, you're somewhat professional. Um, Somewhat, yeah, just enough. The the body stickers are great. Oh, they're not stickers. They're it's not all stickers. Paint. Paint. Three-hour paint jobs. It, 
He's like, people like stickers. No, no, he gets painted. Like, fuck on. you. That's not a sticker. <laughs> How <laughs> long? Some of them take one. The I did the forum. Took seven hours. What? Good times. Yeah, we filmed. Then we filmed. We get photos with it. And it peeled off. It's all How done. How do you have the patience to do oh that? I'm very patient. He also gets some work done with like one arm. Yeah. Dude, Andrews, I'll geez. do work the whole time. I yeah. did a TV show uh, called Legit once that uh, I had to play a personal trainer that became a fat guy. Like the guy, <laughs> rather than me helping him, he got me, turned me into like an alcoholic, you know, obese person. And uh, I had to be in makeup for like three and a half hours every morning to make the fat suit, oh, the fat neck and the fat face. And uh, I just remember I lied to the makeup girl. She goes, did he want, did he want, uh, you know, like 80 pounds on you or 150 pounds? And I was like, what's the difference? She's like, well, one's going to take like five hours. One takes three hours. I'm like, yeah, it was the 80. Yeah, it was 80. I mean, it was the, 60 the, actually. The, the director said 80. Uh, and then the director came in. He's like, what the fuck? You know? And, they, and I'm like, I, 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 I talked to her. She, she did. It. What do I know? I'm just getting paid to be here. Yeah. I was like, I, but I, three, three hours was awful for me uh, to sit in that chair. Well, I didn't do it every day. I, I don't do it every day. Yeah. You um, just did it once. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did that once? You said every No, no, no. For the whole episode. I had to be it every day. Oh, yeah. every day. So, like, I then I'd be like, fuck that. Yeah. And yeah. Early in the morning, too. Yeah. I, I had to show up three hours before everyone else so that when they got to set, I was done. Right. Yeah. That's Andrew, too. I show up at like noon. And he's like, there's paint on me. Like, That's cool. Let's do videos. <laughs> it would take like four hours to start the videos sometimes. <laughs> so I have it on my body for like seven hours. Sometimes his face, he's so itchy that he can't scratch it. I see his face. I see veins coming out. I'm like, that looks uncomfortable. <laughs> was that was that your concept of someone else done that or have you seen that before no so it was his idea so what happened was is the girl living with me she was living with me actually she's a roommate i like having people live with me and my like two places ago and she was uh one day she's upstairs she goes yeah i have a degree in 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 biomedical illustration i'm like what she was yeah i draw anatomy art but but it's she was it's really expensive and nobody's using it anymore i'm like fuck that are you crazy yeah like get in here tomorrow like let's draw on andrew art and it was just like that. Now she's. Now it's she's- incredible. It's the coolest thing because there's always times, you know, everybody's always talking about fascia. Your fascia right, is blah, right. blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is fascia? What does it look right. like? Explain. I'll right. pull apart a chicken and you know. Like and I'm like, no, no, explain to me fascia. Oh, you got you to gotta, you gotta grind out the adhesions. What's an adhesion look like? What am I looking Ooh, we for? We should definitely do fascia. Fascia is a big one. I think, especially with people like CrossFitters and stuff that are constantly. Ooh. Have that. That. Hey, Katie, out. can you write that down? Anatomy art, like fascia, Love scar to tissue. Love what it looks like and what those little adhesions look like. Yeah, that's good. Adhesions. Because sometimes I don't believe them when they're like, CrossFit coaches are always like, okay, we're going to roll out and we're going to you know, grind this down. And I still don't know if I believe it. Hmm. Really? Yeah. The research on it isn't, it's fairly new. So. I mean, okay. if people, here's what happens. People feel pain, right? Right. And then they'll rub their arm. They've never rubbed it in their life. Right. They go, oh, there's something. There it is. That thing's just been there. They're just feeling the shit in their arm. Right. So there's, it could exist, but I haven't seen much. Like, I can't confidently say that, like, by grinding it for days, it, like, noticeably feels that much different. Well, but it makes them feel better. Well, sure. Well, I mean, it, yeah, there's, there's any blood there. There's, that's one, that's mm-hmm. one. That is that's a definite. Yeah. There's definitely more blood to that area. Sure. And if you could scrape that area and pound that one area, there's more blood flow, and it also can numb the area as well for the time being. Sure. Because we, we like, if you hurt, you want to rub yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can rub it so it feels better. Yeah. So blood flow, break, breaking down something, it makes sense. Like if you get a piece, the way I've looked at it is like if you get a chuck roast, if you throw it on the table, you eat it, it's chewy, but if you slam it with a meat hammer a bunch, you can kind of get some more tenderization out of it. True. So true. that's how the the fifty two percent. Is working in your head. That's how it works. <laughs> but but how about this? So say say you say you start hammering a chicken or something like that and beat it up to tenderize it. Yeah. Aren't you breaking up all that muscle tissue? Ah, uh, you're likely not breaking up the actual tissue. Itself. Oh, you're not. No, you're softening it. That tissue's pretty pliable. It is. You're not. You're not going to hit it and like break it. Okay. Because I thought like depends how you hard know, you're hitting it. It does depend. D- I don't d- think my hit mom blasts some chicken. Dude. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> when you see the when you get splatted with the red in the face from the meat, you probably damage some. But, but you always see d- doms. They're like, oh, it's micro tears in your muscle. Well, if I'm beating it with a hammer, then I'm I must be micro tearing it too. So I'm gonna beat myself with a hammer, and I'm gonna micro-tear, feel like I've got doms. Tear, doms. Yeah. yeah, doms is the worst thing in the entire world, especially when you're I like me it. and you don't. <laughs> 
That's tough. That's one reason why. And that's the reason why I don't enjoy CrossFit is because of fuck it. Because of that, I wake up I'm like a feel. I don't want to move. The high volume does that. I don't want to move. Love it. But the, but the best cure I know for DOMS is to work out again. Yeah. It's the only. Way it's to like make eating hot food. Away. Just keep eating yeah. it. It is the only way to make it go away. Yeah, I think it is the only way. Do you agree, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> More doms, more good. <laughs> more doms, more good. That's not a bad T-shirt. More doms, more good. Andrew's got really good one-liners, by the way. I'm just fascinated by this whole organization that you guys have going on. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know he lives half the year in fucking North Carolina. You're here. You got this studio. You're not really qualified. You're not a doctor. <laughs> ah, well, it's, 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 I, I passed the line you've again. C- you've come up with all these things yourself. It, it really is amazing. Well, you don't need, like, the truth is, is I never, rec- I don't recommend Cairo or PT school to anybody because what. I believe occurs from my experience is people spend a quarter million dollars in four years to enter a broken system that is not designed to help people achieve success. Like when you're a PT or a Cairo, truly what it allows you to do, it allows you to build with that degree allows you to bill health insurance. Yeah. That's what it allows you to do. If you don't want to build health insurance, you don't need to be a PT. You can just be a person, learn it and teach it and then not have any of the restrictions that come with being a doctor because the restrictions that come with being a doctor, they try to do HIPAA. Like HIPAA is health insurance. Right, right, they right. want to protect you. But what it means, they isolate you. And so you're isolated from everyone else. So you're not improving with the community. You so feel you, alone. You, you feel alone. But that's only in healthcare. That's was, which is why with CrossFit, the community of CrossFit inspired us to start the community because we go, if we can put this fix your shit philosophy, help people fix their body, but Put them, have them be part of a community of people like CrossFit. We think they're going to achieve more success, and sure enough, they do. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, and I, you know, I see it with my PT. I go to him, and the whole time he's working on me, he's just on the computer billing. You know, like filling out all the paperwork. Dude, it's it sucks go for to them. The it sucks company. for you. I, I did a lot of that. I fucking. Hate oh my it. god, we hated it. We did that too. And I, I, I Kelly Stratt <laughs> said that. I think it was Kelly said. You know, for years we were trying to get acknowledged, and now we're trying to figure out how to get paid for it like totally. like for years and years just being an That's acceptable pr- uh profession and uh i i get that it makes a lot of sense so so you're saying you can just by teaching people what to do with themselves you don't need to be That's certified the shift philosophy is i can't fix you i well i know in the in what's behind move you is i know that no matter what happens to me if i hurt my shoulder or my knee or my hip i have the skills and the awareness and the, and the mindset to be able to overcome that. I've overcome it myself with meniscus, with foot, with shoulder impingement, him with back. And we go, if, I fucked up everything. No, and now our, what that. we do with Move You Mike, is to transfer our knowledge to you. Sure. Because if you had those skills, you'd be good to go. You'd fix your shit. And so that's the whole purpose of Move You. How quickly can we transfer those skills to you? We do it through entertainment. We do it through education. We try to make it interesting. We do it through programs, communities. But that's our whole mission is when people get it, we go, our job is done with that person. But there's millions of people out there that sure. need it. Millions. That that's are- great. It's, it's, it's a great thing. I, I didn't realize. I, I apologize to the listeners for this static on this shitty mic. Um, but um, He's in the 1990s. we got microphones uh, for a podcast. I've never had this. My thumb hurts. I know. That's cool, man. I apologize. <laughs> uh it makes me mobile and plus they they get me pulled over and even uh you know i'm tsa and every single time they're like stop let's bag check and i'm like it's microphones no we got a bag check what the fuck is this (laughs) (laughs) that looks like a weapon yeah but uh no i think what you're doing is great i think it's amazing and i i you know that's kind of what i've done throughout this whole process is a lot of self-education because I'm hurt all the time, and people always make fun of me on the show. Oh, you're always hurt. Well, yeah, because I'm fucking old. But see, it's not. But there's people older than you that aren't hurt. And oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, break it to you. But I do a lot of dumb shit that I shouldn't be doing. I'm running a 68 mile race in November. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I do. I do stupid, stupid (laughs) shit. I ran a marathon drunk. Um, I. uh, And so I'm always hurt. But yeah. there's a quote. It's to know and not do is to never really know. Meaning yeah. if you yeah. really knew, you wouldn't do those things. I got to try everything. You know? That's... Bell's palsy. I got to try All right. Bell's palsy. Yeah. Try it out. How was that? wasn't a good fit. I got I moved on. I got like, what? Oh, so it happened in, from Murph. Like what ha- okay, What so, other things were involved uh, there? So I had been intermittent fasting for a while. Okay. And I woke up the day of uh, Memorial Day and I was like, I'm going to do Murph. I have a uh, garage gym. I was like, I'll do it at home today. And I was like, I- I'll start you know, in an hour. And then I just kept procrastinating. I'm like, I'll start in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And I kept not eating. 
So my my 16 hour fast turned into 17, 18, 19. Probably started about a 20 hour fast. Nice. Went out and did it, and I was probably at an immune suppressed state. You know, like just suppressed my immune system mm-hmm. and just did not feel good. Just had no energy in my body, and let the you know the virus was probably in me and it just came out. You know, the virus is in you if you had the chicken pox. So that's all it is. Same virus. Wow. What virus? The Zoster virus. Oh, the Zoster virus. Yeah, yeah. Zoster. I think it's a shingle type virus. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So it just popped, you know, mm. because I was so... My I actually remember crazy. that from my boards wow. that I studied eight hours for, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the 52% I got right. Look at right it. to herpes Look virus. At, how about that? I... Don't even take the boards, and I know that virus. Yeah, you had to, though. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I voluntarily <laughs> had. I had to Especially when forced. the doctor told me I had herpes in front of my wife. Right. Yeah. yeah but, okay, I now know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun moment. What caught It's a herpetic virus. A, a what? Herpetic? Her, herpetic? Herpetic. Herpes. No, no, no. Herpetics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I will remember this forever. Yeah. Who knew the chicken pox was herpes? It is. Yeah, so- so that's what I think it was. But uh, yeah, were you wearing a vest too? Uh, that time I was not. Yeah. I've done it with the vest. It's horrendous with the vest. It is horrendous. I've never done it with a vest. I've only done, done it with a uh, vest unpartitioned uh, a couple times. Jesus. Unpartitioned, mm-hmm. dude. He's an animal. I'll tell you the secret: wear the vest where you can put the weights in and load them up in the front. So that when you do your push-ups, you're only going down like an inch. Yeah, just, oh. just, and the range of That's how most people do push-ups anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually makes it. Well, only like everything from the ribs up moves. Everything else is already on the ground. Oh, like, right. It's, it's just, it's like a little press-up. It's a press-up. Yeah, That's what most like, people do. An incline press-up. Yeah. So uh, when you were talking about the community, I was like, this sounds derivative of CrossFit. It is. So you learned it. was it inspired from- by. The yeah. community is inspired by CrossFit. That's great. And son of a bitch. It's unbelievable, the results, because you put everyone together. Everyone works together. There's coaches that help. Like The results, the transformations, we're like, holy shit. Now it's actually become, I questioned it for a couple of years. Like he's always, like, I've always believed the community, but like it's, ext- it's, I, it's part of who we are at this yeah. point. Yeah. And I think the difference is that in the community, the members know, like, when they post a video and someone says, these look fucking awesome, they're like, no, I think there's more improvement that needs to be done here. Like, they themselves know that they can improve some more. Wow. And, and you know, everyone's always striving to make improvements and be better than, than what they were yesterday. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to post my cuboid syndrome and see if anyone helps me with that. Oh, post me. your cuboid syndrome. Uh, I'm actually mixing up cuboid and cuneiform. We got a cuboid, no, cuneiform foot. We got cuboid, cuboid, cuneiform. He's got a 50% chance here. Let's see. What, Let's cuboid, see if you know Cuboid, cuboid, because I'm mixing up. We have, we have, there's, there's bones in your hand, there's bones in your feet. And we have cuneiform in the foot, and we got cuboid next to the pies form in the hand. So it's going to be the cune, cuboid. One, two, three, one, there's eight in the hand. So it's going to be the bottom row in one from the, th- from the, from the thumb. Cuboid. 48%. Where is it? Am I it's right? It's in your foot. Oh, cuboid's foot. Yeah, it's right. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't believe What you. is it? Your calcaneus? It's right in I, front of your on, calcaneus. I, don't, I don't believe you. Hold behind on. your, uh, it's like a bone that slipped from overuse. And uh, uh, I was watching videos online to talk about the cuboid whip. You basically like put pressure on it and then turn the foot oh, real quick. Oh, yeah. It's a, you get the navicular and the cuboid. I still think it's cuneiform. Oh, yeah. But I have you, to have it done. You have shoes on? Yeah. Take your shoes off. I'll do it. No. I'm, 50, I'm licensed. <laughs> you, did, you thought it was in my hand. It doesn't matter where the fuck it is. The movement's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same adjustment. <laughs> It's the same damn adjustment. <laughs> Fucking overreact. Do people ever write to you guys and be like, are you drunk when you're filming these? Sometimes they yeah, think I'm like on most times, cocaine. Yeah. They'll think I'm on coke or something. Do they think you're lovers ever? Yeah, the gay oh, guys yeah. do. The gay guys. What's interesting is gay men think we're lovers. Straight people do not. <laughs> and it's the truth that people see like a reflection of themselves and others. What they want to see. <laughs> they see what they want to see. They see what they want to see. Oh my God, you two are the cutest couple. <laughs> it's, but we're okay with it. <laughs> all, all of your posts that you've been doing for Burning Man, they're like, where's Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra. I asked a, a gay friend of yeah. mine once, I go, why do you guys work out so much? And he goes, I guess we all want to be the man we want to have sex with. 
Awesome. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's kind of good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. There's truth to that one. Be the man we want to have sex with. Yeah. That's good. Makes sense. Yeah. No homo on that one. Yeah. You get it, though. But it makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Um, all right. How long have we been doing this How long show? do these go? It's fun, though. I could talk to you guys forever, but i got to get to my show. Oh. Because it's San Diego traffic. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be long. What time's your show? 7.30 and... Uh, I have a 7.30 and 9.45 tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys should come to my show tomorrow night. Dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I get two tomorrow. Where at? At the comedy store in La Jolla. Are you a comedy store? Mm-hmm. You got two tomorrow? Two tomorrow. 7.30, <gasps> uh, 9.45. Damn, my girl's not back in town yet, but I, th- but I'll, yeah, just but I likely will come. You guys interested? I don't know. My mom, she could come. She's yeah. coming down all the okay. way I won't be. F- I won't be filthy for your mom. Good. Be filthy for okay, my mom. Okay, I'll be filthy for awesome. your mom. She's I cool. appreciate the invite, and yeah. it's highly likely we currently have no plans. Okay. Yeah. I'll put love it. 7.30 and care. when? 7.30 and 9.45. And 9.45. And it'd be, definitely be 9.45 Let show. me know because it'll be, it, they're pretty close to selling out. So. Okay, so I need your cell phone. Then. Sure. Okay. And uh, uh, where can people find you other than move you on uh, Instagram, which is where I found you? Yep, it's move you, the letter U, M-O-V-E-U on Instagram. It's move you on Facebook, moveyou.com. Move you on YouTube and make sure you use Move You. We pay a lot of money to make sure we get all this motherfucking mm. names. And don't when you search us, don't click the thing that says ad. Yeah, I never we do that. We I don't never want do that your, to people I like. We're gonna get charged for you yeah. clicking that. <laughs> <laughs> I never do that to people I like. I always go down like a couple. If it's like them. Verizon, I'm like fuck you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I click it five times. But hey, for for everyone out there, is the the point is that you can fix your shit. It's your body. You're in control of it. If you have any pain whatsoever, it's just, it's a sign that something's out of balance, and you're the only one who can fix it. No one can fix it for you. And I just want a, a little disclaimer. People think sometimes that people pay to be on this show. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, I do every once in a while if I like one of my advertisers and I like what they do, I will have them on the show, but they've got to have more of a story. I found you guys. I was just looking at it. I'm like, these videos are awesome. They are... Um, I love what Kelly does. Kelly Sturette does great yeah. stuff. On He's an mobi- innovator. He was a leader in the field. He, Mobility he was, was, he was an, an OG leader. And then I looked at what you guys did. It's, it's, it's great stuff. And the, you, know, you can like more than one band. So, uh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, I saw what you were doing, and I, I really, honestly was like, this shit is fucking great. Awesome. And you're my, like, referral. Like, I used to just Google. when I, Whenever I have a problem, I'll go Google, like, you know, th- this problem, you know, uh, tendonitis, elbow tendonitis. Yeah. What does Kelly say about it? Right. What does Kelly say? So I, I've, I've been checking out a lot of your stuff, and uh, the scapular thing was, was pretty awesome. Because yeah. I think, I think that's a problem most of us all have most we're, everybody we're we're internally rotating our shoulders and if you have a shoulder learning how to do the scoop will help you and you're you're on mm-hmm. your phone constantly so you're totally. fucking up your shoulders and totally uh, kelly we reached out to him one time i forget what we said but, but I like work like collaborating so yeah collaborating is that they're like nah no thanks uh you guys look like you're having fun though <laughs> i'm like oh oh it's like that we're doing fun over here <laughs> if kelly if, Ke- if, if kelly met you guys you'd be best friends Oh, yeah, that's cool. He's fucking amazing. That's cool to know. I've heard great things about him. He is a solid guy, and he literally would love you guys. I've heard great things about Kelly. From some people I really trust as well. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy. So uh, maybe I'll I'll create the summit. Uh, I'll tell you off air how I met Kelly. But um, uh, thank you for doing the show. Thanks for helping all these people. Please don't get rich from it because I swear you'll have like explosives back here. <laughs> <laughs> I come in, there's guns going off. It's like I feel like I, f- I felt like I'm not going to lie to you. When I walked in here, it was like uh, what was that Mark Wahlberg film where he had the giant cock? Uh, oh, yeah, it's a good movie. Dirk Diggler. Yeah, Dirk what Diggler. What was that? Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. <laughs> when I walked in your house, I felt a little Boogie Nights. Did you like, really? For yeah, what? Like, like the pool in the back and everything's going on. It's like you're having a party. And, oh, yeah. yeah. This is a good place to have everyone over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, if you want to come. His address is. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> They'll be here too. Just come over. He'll, Someone will be here from that. In the bushes here. in the back. Doctor Michael fix you. I have shit. night He's vision. He's not too. a doctor. He's not a doctor. He's I don't. I, yeah, I don't, it doesn't matter. But uh, it doesn't matter. They got to fix their own shit. Uh, so thank you guys again. This was an awesome episode. And uh, check out their check out their Instagram, their website. Their I don't know if they ever would ever YouTube, yeah. Facebook, wherever you use. I but Instagram movie. number one. Use Google. Andrew, ask Andrew for his underwear. He'll get naked for you. Anywhere you see him, just say take your shirt off. He'll do it. He'll do it. Instagram is our number one channel. So start does, there if you have. Does it. he wear a shirt on airplanes? Yeah, okay. his back yeah, sticks to the seats. He uses yeah. plastic seats. Plastic. Yeah, we don't sit first class. What do you squat? 
Uh, what do I squat? I don't even know. 365. That's pretty good. It's light. What about snatch? Snatch 225. Mm, you got to get that up. Yeah. He doesn't, um, really, he doesn't really care about the heavyweight. He's yeah, good form. I don't go, he shouldn't. You're no. all about form. Yeah, yeah oh, doesn't yeah. care. I'm like, as soon as my form starts to break. Yeah, that's It's not it worth be. it. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Because uh, if you hold your form true with every rep, you end, up, you end up looking and feeling the way you want. Yeah. Not just in that short-term burst. You don't look horrible like me. Um, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about the reps, everyone. <laughs> People look at me. They're like, that guy must do a lot of reps. Sorry, you got shit to fix like all of us. I do. Oh, yeah. I do. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks for doing it. And, yeah, uh, that was awesome. Thanks, go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Hey, the wide <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. How long were we on here? A fucking long time. Um, great show. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Later.